welcome to this tutorial video for Flight Simulator. Uh, what this tutorial is going to cover is how to fly the uh, A320 Airbus from cold and dark from one airport to another in the most sort of realistic way possible. Um, I'm not a real pilot and I will probably make a hell of a lot of mistakes. This is uh, based on things I've picked up from other videos and forums, etc., etc. But uh, we'll try and keep it reasonably realistic. Um, so the first thing, there's a couple of things uh, you'll need for this. Um, the first thing is the uh, A32NX free um module download which adds a lot more realism to the um a320 airbus that comes default with flight simulator it fixes a lot of things it adds a lot more features that they're actually in the airbus that aren't included so that is the important thing to uh, kick off with so this is where you get hold of the a32 nx i will put the link in the uh description as well um it's a free community add-on and all you do is depending on what you want whether you want the developer build which may have new features but may also not be as stable you download it here for the stable release which we're going to be using for the tutorial i will download it here and then there is a development build which will have more features and more bugs which you download there so basically you download the zip file from the links on the page and unzip the folder into your flight simulator community folder which is here everything else is separate things i've downloaded liveries etc which i'll put a link to as well but this is the important one here so once that's in um then boot up flight simulator and you'll have all the new features uh obviously don't put it in there while flight simulator is running because it won't pick up until you next load it so the other thing is a sim brief account this is the best free flight planning software uh, again it's completely free you can log in and create an account which i've done here and we will use this to uh plan our flight so Let's do that. That's the first thing we're going to do is plan our flight. We're going to go from Heathrow to Charles de Gaulle, Paris, only a short flight. So what we want to do is go to dispatch system here and we'll do a new flight. Okay, so first thing you want to choose is your airframe. Um, I've saved a couple here but you can just do the a320 that worked perfectly well um we'll use uh, my easy jet one here so you can put your flight number in um we can look on the internet for flight numbers let's do four five six seven and ez ez so our departure airport we need the ical codes you can google those uh so we know egll is gatwick and we want to go to charles de gaulle which i know is lfpg but we can uh, you can google those and then it will choose an alternate airport for us okay this is what i would put on here flight plan layer layer i like the easy jet layout and um, we'll have everything kilograms so this this rfp layer is the resulting flight plan layout that it uh, produces and i find the easy jet style is a lot easier to read right so these are optional entries i don't really do anything with these i leave everything on auto so we've got the route finder here is already done for us here this is our route looks like we're going over bogner and if we keep them scrolling down we will see our route here i 
Okay, it does not give us a, uh, a star, which is an arrival route. So ideally, we want one that sort of comes in and lines us up nicely. So I think we can get that in here in the route finder. Find Sid or star. Uh, it wants us to come in on runway eight. We can change that, I think. Arrival runway. We can change it there. This is bringing us in on runway uh, runway eight for some reason. So say we change that to twenty six left. And here's not nothing. That's but however we can we can not bother with the stars. And we can do we can do that as we look from here. We can do that within flight sim. See that that hasn't done us a proper approach and star at all. It's normally normally it would, so I've obviously done something wrong. But we can do that inside flight simulator anyway. Right, so that'll do for now. Okay, so now what we're going to do, let's put that back. Oh, we'll leave that. We'll leave that. We can choose our runway later. So now that's done, we will do the generate the OFP, which generates the flight plan for us. And here's our flight plan. Again, if you look at the layout, we get everything we need here, right up in the nice, in the top section. So these are our fuel weights here. Uh, this is our trip wind. This is our flight number here. Cruising altitude is flight level 250. There's no point going any higher than that because the, it's not a very long trip. And here's here's our route here. So this is our flight planned. This is our zero fuel weight here. This is our flight plan. Now let's get back into the simulator. Once in the simulator, you've got several options here. But for all of them, you select the world map. So you can either low, uh, export your uh, route out of Simbrief, which you used to have to do in the old days, or or import it in using the um, aircraft facilities. We're going to do the second option. But if you wanted to uh, export it out as a flight sim 2020 flight plan in, uh, and save it as a file from Simbrief, you can, and then load it in here. But we're not going to do that. So we are going to go to from Heathrow. OK, now because it is going to be cold and dark, we will choose Instead of departing from a runway, we will choose gate a gate parking area. So let's do this one here. Okay, so we'll choose a gate. So we're here on the runway. Here. That's uh, yeah, that's all we need to know here. We don't have to put the departure airport. Because you can do that and flight sim will do the flight plan for you, but it's not quite as realistic as the ones generated by sim brief. That, let's zoom in a bit. Because we can we can put in whatever one we like here. We can just click one, do set as departure. Like that. So yeah, it's quite flexible what you can do here. But we'll we'll leave it at we'll leave it at this one for now. And now here comes the big one. We now have got to set the aircraft up. Okay, here we are at Heathrow Airport. Airbus. So let's get into the plane. So how do we get it ready for the passengers? Okay, so look, our plane is completely and utterly switched off. But it should be connected to the facilities. So the first thing to do is go up to the overhead panel 
and we want to turn the batteries on. Battery one and two are here. So that's that coming on, and then now the batteries are on, we can turn on the external power here, which we're plugged into from the airport. And that will start firing some things up. As you can hear, the fans are on, which cool down the instruments. So the first thing I normally do is turn the uh, cockpit up, cockpit air to a temperature and depending on if you're if it's a night flight you might want to turn up the brightness of the panel which is down here that should do us nicely we turn on the uh, no smoking to auto and the uh, emergency exit signs to arm and the nav and logo light on. Okay, we won't need anything else at the moment. So, if we look down back at our instruments now, down here, we can see it says map not available there, and we've got no information here either. And uh, not much on this one. So, that's because our ADIRs need aligning, which is the. Uh, the GPS and the um, like the gyroscopic uh, alignment systems, positioning systems, all need aligning. So, go back up to the panel, and we switch all of these onto nav. We've got number one here, number two here, number three here. So I'm going to do one, two, three. So these are going to start the alignment process. It's not instant. If we look down here, okay, there's still nothing available there. And if we go along to here, we can see there it's going to be uh, around about seven minutes. It's uh, the closer to the equator you are, the further it is. Obviously, the further away you are, the slower it is. So while we're waiting for that, let's set our cruise altitude on here to. 25,000 feet, flight level 250, and turn the flight directors on there. Um, so that's that. Um, depending on the brightness outside, you might want to turn the brightness up of the instruments. There's one there. And there's some here as well. And then we've got these here as well. Brightness there. You can do um, the first officers ones. They're they're separate. You can do those as well. And the last thing to do is the ECAM panels. If we look down here, you can see those here. Oh, and one more thing. Right down here. You've got the uh, the floodlights, so I turn those on a bit, and one here. So our aircraft is nicely lit up. Uh, another thing to do if you're doing a night flight is set your dome light to dim before start up. That uh, actually puts a light on, a proper light on in the cockpit, so the ground crew can see the pilot doing any waving off signals, etc., etc. So now we can see everything. We can turn the fuel pumps on. So there the fuel pumps on. And um, yeah, the plane is uh, still got seven minutes to go to line the ideas up. So let's start going down to the computer and putting everything in. So this is our menu. We want the um, FMGC. Okay, it says GPS primary lost. That is because the um, ADIs haven't lined up, which we know. So the first thing we do is the init. Okay, so we've got nof nothing in here for our flight information at the moment. But here, here's what we can do. If you've set this up properly with your SIM brief account, which you can do in the MCDU menu, you click init. 
and that should pull it all down from Simbrief. So we've got our departure and arrival airport, our flight number, we've got our cost index, we've got our cruising altitude. So everything we need in there. Okay. What we haven't got is our zero fuel weight and our block fuel. So what we need to do is look at how much fuel we need which is on our flight plan here so fuel we're going to need is here uh, 4611 kilos so what we do we go and fuel the aircraft with here and if we look at the fuel, we've got 9,000 here. So we've, we've got a bit too much fuel for the two kilos. So try and get this as near 4,600 as we can. Oh, 4,954. That will do. Okay, so that's our fuel. There's our centre of gravity here. But the good thing about that is, if we close this, we click the zero fuel weight, zero centre of gravity. That's the weight of the plane and the and the passengers and the uh, luggage and everything, but not the fuel. We should be able to click that, and it will calculate it for us. And we click it again, and that will go in. The last thing is the block fuel. If we look up here, the block fuel, 4880 kilograms. So down to here again I think it's 4.8 ok so we've got the trip wind here this is headwind, tailwind, everything from the, from the uh, latest weather if we go back to our sim brief we've got the trip wind of a 22 knot tailwind so T22 so we just put that in T22 into trip wind ok that will, uh, that will add that into there so that's the in it part all done now so we uh, normally do the data then flight plan then perf what we'll do, we'll do the per first. That's the performance. So we're going to take off with flaps one, which is standard. So we'll put one in and click that on the flaps. Flex two temperature, you would calculate on our website, which I will show you now. Here's the website. Again, I will put the uh, link to that in the uh, video description. So you choose your aircraft. This is an A320. Um, anti-ice we all have uh, all the anti-ice on and depending on the weather you choose what the runway conditions so we put our starting airport in there and we click Matar okay, that will give us the um, details that's our Q&H which is our bar barometric pressure and we have winds and everything there, but we can get that anyway so we've got the uh, wind at 290 degrees at 3 knots there so that gets that, we choose the runway in fact I can't even remember what the runway was we're taking off at so we can go back to our flight plan and we, we can see here we're going from 27 right and we're landing at 26 left at um, Paris so 27 right is our takeoff way so we'll choose that here okay and then all we need to do now is click calculate and that will give us our flex 2 temperature which is 66 actually that's the that's the um, that's basically an engine rating so depending on the weather that is um, that's that calculates what we can take off with without having to go throttle maximum throttle which is toga take off go around so it'd be slightly less, so it's for engine engine um, noise levels. Won't be quite so loud because you're not going at full belt. And also the um, wear and tear on the engine too. So our flex 2 temperature is 66. So let's plumb that in. 
I'll flex two. And then, because we're in England, I'll transition altitude from ground barometric pressure to um, standard barometric pressure is at 6,000, is when you switch. In America, it's 18,000. Some other parts of Europe is 8,000 feet. So I'll show you what that means in a minute. So that's our transition altitude. So all we've got left is our takeoff speeds. Um, that can be calculated by the Airbus itself based on everything we've put in. So we just click that. V1 is 122 knots. VR, which is the speed we rotate at, is 123. V2 is a no going back speed, I believe. That's 127 knots. So that's all done. These are quite low because we're taken up with flaps one and we haven't got a lot of fuel on. So now we go to our flight plan. You see, we we haven't really got a um, a star or a SID and a star. That is the departure route and the takeoff route. So if we go up here, flick flick this over to plan and just make that a bit bigger. We can we can see our plan here. It's literally taking us straight out of the airport down. So we're not actually following a departure route. So we can put that in now. We know we've got to go to mid Midhurst. That's our first waypoint. So we'll click this and we'll choose our our SID. So we're doing 27 right. We'll go down. We haven't we haven't got a. Uh, We haven't got a a, a um, Midhurst one, so just choose. Let's just choose May. Let's insert that. And sometimes we get a a crappy uh, user. Clear that. that's gone so in now if we if we look at our plan up on here still doesn't look amazing but <laughs> well I've messed that up probably let's put that to 10 kilometers ah, so at least we're going along a bit and before we do our left turn and we can look at a bigger picture by increasing that Oh yeah, we chose a, we chose a terrible one to use. Absolutely terrible. So we're going to go out down there, hit May, and uh, right. Let's see. If we can delete that and put a new one in. This is where we could end up in trouble. So let's clear that. Ooh. We've cleared that, and let's clear May. So that's gone now completely. So let's choose a different. Uh, let's choose a different one. Is, I don't know. You need charts really to do the any charts. So let's try this one. Okay. That looks okay. That doesn't look too bad at all. So let's reduce that. And we can see, yeah, we're going to go along down. We'll get rid of the user as user point as well. That's a bug. So click clear. And we'll click user. Oh, we've got another one. Yeah.
Okay, so let's get rid of this user here. There we go. So that's our that's our uh, departure. That looks pretty good. Out and down. Right, let's reset our view a bit. We'll do our arrival route once we uh, once we're airborne. So, what we can do now, we've got our fuel and everything on board. We can put our seatbelt signs on. And we can let the passengers on. So, the way we do that is this to an external view. Here we are at the departure gate. This is not overly realistic, this part. So you wouldn't tune uh, Heathrow ground for this, but we do it in here. So we'll tune the ground services and we will request the jetway. Heathrow ground easy jet echo Zulu four five six seven. Could you please connect the jetway to the aircraft? Here comes the jetway. And at the baggage. So, as you can see, the jetway is connected there, and here comes the baggage. You can see the baggage there. He's just going up to connect the conveyor belt. And we should see the baggage going on. So our passengers are coming down the jetway. Oh, I heard an engine start up there. There's the baggage trolley with all the suitcases on there. So they're just going to throw them as hard as they can into the back of the airplane without giving a fuck about damaging anything. Okay, so you get the uh, get the idea there. Baggage going on. Looks like we're going to have a night landing at this rate, which would be good. So let's go back to the cockpit. So, we, we are, our computer side of things is pretty much done. Let's uh, go through. Yep, that's all done. And what we can do is if we go to the MCD menu, Engineering. If we go to apps and we go to the AOC menu, we can get a, um, a weather report, which would be very handy. So EGLL and LFPG, so both airports, Heathrow and Charles de Gaulle. We send that request. Okay, we'll send that. And if we, if we look at these screens here, turn the brightness up a bit on that. We should see a uh, message come through. We'll see this uh, here. This is our doors. We can see that the cargo door and the cabin door are open, letting the passengers and the suitcases in. Ah, a company message. See, see that there? Okay, so that means we have got a message come through on here. So if we go back there and we go to receive messages, this will give us our current weather. So we know here that our QNH barometric pressure is 994 and we know it's 998 in France at the moment but we will do another weather check when we get nearer nearer the airport okay so QNH is 994 so if we go to the panel here our QNH is uh, 1013 which is standard so we'll just change that You can actually press B and it will set it for you. So if I press B, that will go down to 9. But I prefer to do it manually like the pilots would do. Right. Okay, so ideas have aligned. Um, as you can see on here, 
we've got everything we need on here now. All the displays come up, the ideas are aligned. I reckon <coughs> passengers are on board and we can do a push back and start up. So, the first thing we need to do, because we're going to be disconnecting from the uh, the ground power, we need to start our APU, which is a little engine at the back, which generates the power for us, or the main engines aren't in use. So to do that, we turn the auxiliary power unit, APU, master switch to on. Wait a few seconds, and then we can hit start. Okay, so if we go down to here, you will see it's screen. I mean, we could have done this earlier on, going through the stages sort of separately, just to show you what I'm doing. See, the flaps open for that. You can see that's gradually increasing. Once that is up at 10, then we know the APU's uh, working. Exhaust gas, gas temperature. It's going up a bit there. So if we look while well, that's firing up, if we go back to the external view. That's at the back here. As you can hear that starting there, see that's engine. There. Oh, we can hear that starting up. Okay, back to the uh, cockpit. Oop. And it's getting there. And then once once the APU is fired up. Then we can um, do what we call APU bleed, which is where we let the the air we bleed off some of the air from the APU, and that will allow us to to start the main engines, and it will also provide air for positioning packs in the aeroplane as well. See, APU is now available. Give it a second to warm up, and then we'll go back to the overhead panel. Put APU bleed on. So now all our air is coming through. You can hear it now. So we can turn the crew air supply on. Turn the standby compass light. Right, so we are ready to put. So what we do for that is put our beacon light on. That signals to the ground crew that we're ready, and you always have your beacon light on when you're ready to start your engines up or your engines are going. They're actually uh, already uh, already uh, running. So this beacon light will now stay on until we turn our main engines off. So I haven't got any pushback add-ons for this. So if we go back to the main view, okay, I will just uh, let's have a look map where we are and how we're going to navigate round to the runway. So we go to the VFR map. So we're here, we're going to go back, back that way, and we'll taxi along this uh, here and then round to the end, it's the runway. We'll push back and then we want, to, we want to push back and turn facing north, don't we? So the back of the plane will go left, the front of the plane will go and be pushed back. Right, so let's start the pushback. I'm just going to do Shift P. We do an external view for that. So the jetway goes, the doors shut. Okay, that will connect, so... It took a 747 behind us. Okay, uh, one thing we've got to do, if that started the pushback now, 
you're not going very fast. We need, we need to uh, turn off the parking brake, which we do here. Now we're going at a, a, a bit of a rate. So now let's turn. So we want to steer to the, the back of the plane to go left, so the front of the plane goes right. There we go. So I'm going to get roughly in the right spot, and then I will uh, do shift P to stop the pushback. We're quite on the centre line there, the yellow centre line, but this, this will do. This will do for now. Normally by now you'd start your engines up during the pushback process, but we'll do that afterwards once the pushback is completed. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to stop the pushback. Let's close this and go back to the cockpit view. So, first things first, let's put the brakes on. Right, let's get our engine started. Uh, the way we do that, our APU bleed is on. We move this switch to start. And we will start engine number two first. Now we should see, this is engine number two here. The EGT and N2 will start going up. EGT is exhaust gas temperature. Yep, and you can hear it yourself. And once this gets to about 19, we should, or 18, 19 percentage, we should get the available message, which means this uh, this engine is ready to use. Look at that. It's starting up pretty quick. So, before you do that, what you'd normally wave and then once they're gone then you can turn your uh, dome light off completely you only need that on while so they can see you waving them away but for this we've I can't show you as wave right okay so engine number two is available let's do engine number one so we're going into here and we'll do number while we're down here, um, if you're using ATC, which is in here, air traffic control, you'd put your squawk number in there. I'm not going to do that. But we'll turn the TCAS, the Transport Collision Avoidance System. I think that's what T, the T stands for. Turn that to on. Turn this to auto. Turn the predicted wind shear and put our radar assist 2. That gives us our weather radar. Um, we'll do the flaps and the spoilers uh, once we've uh, nearer the runway. Um, we'll also lock the cockpit door as well. Alright, let's check on our engines. So this is nearly ready. There we go, that's available. So we now have both engines up and running. So we will now turn off the ignition selector to normal mode. And we don't need the APU anymore. So we will turn that off and that off there. Because now all our, all our uh, electricity is generated by the main engines. Okay, so let's put our nose light to taxi. And we'll put our runway turn lights on because we'll be turning around the runway and our strobe lights to auto. This is our wing ice light on. We don't need to check the wings for ice build up. But I will put the anti ice on once we take off. So I think we're ready to taxi. 
So let's put our little map up. We're using this instead of the chart. So, first thing first, release the pump brake. Um, I'm going to be using a PlayStation control this because I'm doing this remotely. And let's just pop that in there actually, so you can see the engines. Okay, a little bit of throttle. Okay, and then zip zero the throttle because the engine idling um, gives us enough enough um, power to uh, to move, and it will actually accelerate us slightly. So I think we can go all the way along here. To the end. Okay, so we are taxiing uh, about 14 knots according to this here. So it's increasing slightly. Um, but they don't like it if you go any faster than about 30 knots. So I, I will let it naturally increase until we uh, get to 30, and then I'll apply a little bit of braking. We'll see a little bit of braking if we've got any turns. What we're going to do is we're going to go up as we would do if we were directed by the traffic control and hold short of the way. A special spot designed just for that. So we're now doing 30 knots. Let's just squeeze the brake a little bit. Well, I'm doing flights in videos, this is the bit I hate them. There's nothing boring watching someone taxiing an aircraft just this one half the length of the runway Okay, so I think we do a small right turn and then a left turn. So, break a little bit. We go round. Keep it, keep it on the uh, left turn. You can see where we're going on the map there. Okay, and then we'll do the slight uh, right turn here. So even though we don't really need to, we'll use the full. Normally, a, a traffic control will tell you which uh, taxiway to use and stop short. Speaking of stop short, here we are. So let's stop short here. We are not allowed over that unless we've been. So I'm going to stop short here. I'm going to put the parking brake on, and now we're ready to do our. Um, Go through our checklists. We could have done a lot of that um, during taxiing. I didn't. Because there's only one of me, there's two pilots. Right, so the first thing we need to do is speed brakes, ground spoilers. So we move that to the arm position. Our flaps need to go to. 
ready for takeoff. And if we look at the display here, it gives you a good idea of what you need to what you need to uh, to do. So our auto brake needs to be set on max. So let's close that now. That's our auto brake there. And we need to do our takeoff config check. So we can do the um, click flight control here. And here we can move our we can check our elevators, ailerons, rudder, and we can check the uh, spoilers as well. But those mapped to my PlayStation controller. So we've checked that. So the other thing is to do is a takeoff test. Click takeoff config, and the Airbus will run through the checks itself. That says normal. Okay, and the last thing to do is um, tell the cabin crew about to uh, take off, which we do up on the overhead panel, which we do here. Okay, so while we're up here, we'll turn the landing lights, sort of put our nose lights to take off. Our strobe lights are on auto, but it's good when um, being on the runway to set them on so you know that they're going to be on. Well, on auto, we use the uh, landing gear load weight to decide whether they should be on. So to take off, we will put them onto on. And then once we've taken off, we'll put them to auto. So I believe we're ready for takeoff. So parking brakes released. A little bit of throttle. So we're now going onto the runway. <coughs> we, uh, I'm pretending that air traffic control have given us clearance. So let's line ourselves up nicely in the centre. Like so. Okay, so one thing I will show you on break moment. If we go to the throttle quadrant, or oh, you can see there's these notches here so we got zero then all the way up to climb which we'll be using mostly toga which is full strength and flex <coughs> flex is what we, we want to get it to to take off and it will calculate the thrust based on the flex temperature that we put in so to take off Put brake on, weighing the engines up to about 40%. Okay, I've done it slightly more. Release, release the foot brake, <coughs> and then we'll get it up to flex temperature, which is now in climb. So it'll be the next click, yeah, and it's flex. And you can see that down here slight downward push on the uh, stick to stop us taking off and we can see now we've gone past V1 we can gently pull it up now that's a positive rate of climb there so the gear can go up landing gear, I'll just press the G key ok See our speed's increasing now, we reduce to zero. We can see uh, on here we're getting near our speed that we want. 
so now it says put it into climb mode so reduce the to climb and as you see it's going to keep our speed set at around the 250 knots let's go back to our mode here and we see that that is our course there so that was a pretty decent takeoff I mean a real pilot would probably differ with me so what we can do now we can put the autopilot on that will now take the plane and follow our course out so we've got a now beautiful sunset as you can see down here I should have sort of in initiated the left turn earlier. I was showing you everything, so we're now going to follow that course. If you can see, we're above 6,000. It's saying the QNH is out because our transition altitude. So what I'm going to do now is put this into standard mode. It may it may have adjusted our height somewhat, but there we. To go it's fine so we're now back on course and we're nearly at um, we're nearly at uh, 10,000 feet and we've got to do a couple of other things so if you notice once we hit 10,000 feet this will increase our target speed we're allowed to exceed 250 knots once we hit 10,000 feet as you can see the target speed has now gone up uh, another thing we need to do is if we go into the overhead panel here, we can now turn off the landing lights, turn off the nose lights, put the strobe back onto auto, and I have not put the anti-ice on, which I should have done earlier, I'll put that on now. Although it doesn't appear to be that cloudy, so out here, yeah, it's not that cloudy at all. So this is that radar I showed you. Appear to be a huge amount of cloud on it. Uh, what we can do, we can change the uh, mode to turbulence. So that will change our radio to show us any potential turbulence spots. Okay, we can disarm the uh, ground spoilers. We don't need those. We're going to look back at our. There, it, these are. It's green. Nothing to worry about. If it's red and purple spots on there, then we should probably put the seatbelt signs on because there will be some turbulence. All right. Well, once we get to about twenty thousand feet, because there's no turbulence, I'm going. To Turn on the seat. Turn off the seatbelt signs, so the passengers can go around. So going to complain as they do. We are on our way to Paris. Looks like it's going to be nice and dark for landing. Look at that. There's the British coast, that's uh, Hailing Island there and Portsmouth there. Then you've got uh, Chichester, Selsey, Bill, uh, Brighton. Right, see, so we can see from this that our altitude is on 20,000 feet. I'm going to uh, go back to the uh, cabin. We can look out the windows. I've set some custom views up. That's what the passengers will be seeing. And out uh, of this window as well. So, let's go up to here. Let's turn off the seatbelt signs. Check on our display. 
always look for things that are blue down here. We've got nothing, nothing in blue there. Good job we've got the anti-ice on, as you can see there, because we've got some cloud now. And uh, the autopilot is taking us off. Don't have to use the autopilot. You can just follow the course manually if you want to. So, let's, because it's not a long flight, let's start setting up uh, ready for approach and landing. So we're going to do, we're going to do a few things. So the first thing we'll do, if we go down to our flight computer, is we'll get a, a slightly newer weather report. So we'll go back. So we will go to WX requests. We would send that. Oh, looks like the engines have slowed down. We must be pretty much a cooling altitude. Let's check on our panel here and we'll wait for a company message to appear, which is just done there. Back here, receive messages. Uh, this is the most recent one at the top. So there we go. So our QH where we're going is 998 this is what it wants enter destination data this is what we're going to do 998 I mean you may want to write a lot of these down uh, temperature is 2 degrees that's the dew point is 1 degrees and the wind is um, 210 at 9 knots okay the rest is cloud information so let's put that in. So we're going to go back to Perth. Let's see if I can remember them. I'm going to click along here. Oh no, next phase is the approach phase. So QNH is not. Temperature is 2. And I think the wind was 220 at 3 knots. I believe I may be wrong. Transition altitude, we will do. I think it's 8,000 in Paris, but you can get that from the charts. I don't know what the decision height is. Again, I haven't got a chart. So we've got all our data in there. So it shouldn't wind us for uh, into destination data. So now we will check what runway we're going to come in on. Obviously, ATC would give us that. Um, I don't know, so I'm going to look on here, and we can see from here it's 20 left on our flight plan. So we now need to put our star in. Hopefully, it'll be the right one. So we look at our flight plan. Scroll down. Bibax. We're on the Bibax route here. UM605 Bibax. So we'll use that to try and get our flight plan in. Uh, our star in, our arrival route. So we will click that. Arrival. ILS 26 left. We. It's not the long runway, is it? It's interesting. So we've got a Bibax one here, which is quite interesting. Three of them. Which one to choose? I haven't got a chart. So I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose this one. I'm not doing a uh, via. I'm not going to do a via. So it's chosen Banox. So just, I'll insert it. We'll have a look at it. So let's go back to the. We're on the flight pan page. We will flick through it. So we go up to here. We, we click this into plan mode. And we can see uh, where our plane's going. Let's just uh, move that to 20 so we can see a little. Okay, so what I'll do is I will go down here like that and flick through the flight plan. See what route that's taking us in. OK, 
okay, a long down, round and in. That will do, it's windy. That will do. Okay, and the last thing we need to do, let's just put this back in mode. We'll keep that. It's not the best, but <laughs> we'll keep that. This is, you know, this is where there's still some bugs to be fixed. Flights in 2020, doing the arrival routes properly. The last thing to do is work out when our descent is going to uh, commence. And the way we do that is we we look at our current altitude. Let's just reset this camera view. So we're cruising at 25,000 feet. And what we do is to work out when we need to descend is we, we divide this by a thousand, so it's 25. Multiply by 3, which gives us 75. And then add 10. And then the extra 10 is just slowing down. <coughs> so that is 85. So what we will do, we need to start slowing down 85 uh, nautical miles from our destination. So let's look on our thing here, and we know here is 221 miles to go. So we've got a while yet. Um, sometimes you can even see the top of descent on here. It doesn't always work. Um, tell you what I'll do. Let's turn the radar terrain down a bit. On here you'll have a little arc coming off which indicates where the top of descent is. Or if you're using a, uh, another tool like uh, the flight sim um, sim brief, well, I can't remember. This is one I use sometimes, and that gives you a map and tells you where the top of descent is. I think we might actually see it on the flight plan. Let's surf out around here. That's top of climb. Yeah, top of descent is round about there. However, I've added the star in, so that's... But, yeah, we, we, we know roughly when, when to do it, and we'll go down to about 3,000. So, that's where we're at. We've got another... Oh, 120-odd miles to go. And we can start descending. So I will jump cut to to round about there. Okay, we're uh, 95 miles now. We're, we're not far from our top of descent. So let's just go and have a look at these constraints we can see down here. So we've really got to be down to about 4,000 by the time we hit here. So what we will do now now we're nearly at 85 we will come up here and we will move this down to 4000 and we will instigate it by clicking that we're in engage so we will now start dropping as you can see we've got a, a few sharp turns because of the sort of strange uh, arrival route this thing has put us on uh, we've got a little bit of red here in our radar, so what I will do is, as we're descending anyway, I'm going to put the seatbelt signs on. Keep the anti-ice on because we'll be going through clouds. Yeah, so we're going to go round and then do a very sharp turn. Let's see, there's our vertical speed is down there. This will... This, oh, it's, it's going to curve around. Okay. As you can see there, coming out, I think that's our D-cell. Oh, no, it's not. But we, we will hit our D-cell point at some point, which will activate the approach phase, which will then drop our target speed down 
from two two fifty knots, which it'll be once we get under ten thousand feet, to approach mode. Where it'll be sort of under under two hundred knots and we start applying the flaps. So you know, this is a very, very interesting arrival route that it's chosen for us, but nevertheless. There we use it, so it's just getting us back in line with it. And then we'll be flying around there. Let's look here where we're at. We're at Bannox, we shall hit the D-cell very soon. Okay, this this distance is interesting. Obviously it's the, before it, it wasn't applying the star distance, so we're well over 80. 85 nautical miles away, but oh well, if that's a bug, it's a bug. This is still work in progress. This um, add on, but it's still absolutely brilliant and much, much better than what you get that comes default with flight sim. Okay, so we're on our way down. We should hit this D cell pretty soon. Well, there's just a constraint there 4,400. Um, if it doesn't activate our approach mode when we go through that, there's a way to activate it manually, which we'll look at. <coughs> As you can see, it's completely black outside. I don't think we can put any more lighting on. Uh, we might be able to ramp these up a bit. So make it a bit easier. Yeah, a little bit. We can see everything we need to see. So we're down now to 16,600 feet, roughly. roughly. And then we will start configuring ourselves once we're in the approach mode for a landing. And once we get under 10,000 feet, our target speed, which is down here, should drop to 250 knots. At the moment our throttle's idle, because we're using the actual Isaac Newton to maintain our speed. So we needed to drop our speed, the aircraft level us off with the throttle at idle until we slow down in, in, to the target speed. It will do that automatically for us. So not far to go until we're under 10,000 feet. Passengers should all have their uh, seat belts on. Let me just check something back in here on that. I put the correct uh, wind speed in. In the received messages. I did it at oh it's nine knot two ten at nine knots. I think I did it slightly slightly differently. It's yeah two ten at nine knots. There we go. Okay, we're doing well on our descent. Now 102 miles away. I don't know what that 85 was all about. Okay, so just coming up to 11,000 feet. We shall transition at 8,000 feet into um, selected barometric pressure, which we got, I think it's 998, according to that metal. So we could put that in or cheat and press the B key on the keyboard, which would set it for us. So you know, as you can see here, we're levelling off a little bit so the aircraft can slow down to 250, which it is doing now. 
So, so once we're at 250, you should see the plane uh, sort of going to a steeper descent. This is why we always add, we do the three, the height times three, and then we add 10 as well. We need, need that extra 10 for slowing down. So we're nearly at 250 here. And this should drop. And here we go. That is now dropping. Keeping the throttle at idle. As you as you saw earlier, we apart from the takeoff, we have the into the climb position all the way through, um, which is on this notch here. But you see, that means the Airbus will be in charge of the throttle between everything from zero up to climb. So if we move that down to about here, the Airbus can only manage the throttle range between zero and there. That's why we keep it on climb for the entire flight. Apart from take off, and then we reduce it to zero just before we touch down. So, because we've gone under 10,000 feet, there's a couple of things we need to do now. So, we need to put our landing lights back on. I'll put the strobes onto on instead of auto. And I will put the taxi lights on. We don't use the takeoff at all during landing. Oh, we can actually see something. So we're nearly down to 4,000. I think I'm... now we've gone down below 8,000. That is us. So we will put selection on and we will switch it to 998. I think we've got a bit of a long way to go at 4,000 feet. <laughs> because of uh, <laughs> that little bug. About 20 more miles than normal. But we'll keep an eye on it. Let's see what the passengers will be seeing right now. I'll march out of that window. And a little bit more out of that window. That's uh, an interesting thing with the flight sim. You obviously, going by this camera angle, there's no interior lighting at all in the cabin. However, if we look at it from outside, There's, light, there's lights in there. That's interesting, eh? Oh, as it's a bit dark, we can't really see very much. Um, it looks like we've hit 4,000. The engines have fired up. That's our that's phase of the descent done. Is our fuel? You see, we've uh, we were, the fuel was quite accurate, just enough to get us there with a bit extra. So yeah, the engine because our descent rate has dramatically decreased because thousand, the engines have kicked in to keep us round about two hundred and fifty knots. Right, let's get back into the cockpit. Let's look at our. How much further we've got to go? Oh, it's going to be. This is a really, really bizarre uh, <laughs> route it's taken us on. We're going to go along here and then round it. And normally, I would have had had us at four thousand, around about sort of here. It is what it is. Okay, well we've gone past the decel phase. I think we were um, 
too far away for whatever reason. So what I, what I will probably do is I'll activate the approach phase manually once we get a bit nearer. So what I'll do, I will jump cut to when we are uh, sort of a little bit nearer, possibly around here. And we'll do the last phase of the landing. If you look on here, see this doesn't know we're in approach mode either. Okay, I will jump cut to there. Right, uh, it's just activated the approach. So as you can see, this is going to go down to the dot speed. And the dot speed is dictated by the flaps. So here, our dot is just below 200 knots, so we'll slow down to 200 knots. While we're in the approach phase, we can click LS, which will turn on our landing system. Okay, uh, as you can see, we are only four nautical miles directly from the runway, but here, and we're going to be going away from it. We're below the height we should be for the approach on the glide slope, but then we are going away from the runway. Quite far away from the runway. But 15 miles away, 15 nautical miles away. In fact, I might... Shall I drop the speed a bit? Yeah, I might drop the height down to 3,000, I think. So all I'll do is I'll go over to here. Drop that down to 3 and plop that if we look at the if we turn the constraints that shows the constraints on here so we've got to be no higher than 4000 to there so I think dropping the speed is a good idea dropping that altitude even the speed's dropping for us So it's now we're now heading to this last waypoint here and then we'll be on final approach so we're, we're, our speed isn't dropping that much but as you see we're getting further and from the way that's another 17 uh, eight eight miles to uh, to here and as you can see this is going up because we're going away from the runway. The glide slope is we're going to be getting below it instead of being above it. And below it is always good uh, when before you uh, actually uh, do your final approach. Okay, so I'm going to start putting some flap on. So I'm going to use the function keys, uh, put the flaps up to one. So you can see flap set to one. That will drop our speed down a bit. Once that's down, then I will drop flap again to flap two until we're on full flaps so we're now 11 nautical miles from the runway if you want to see anything so we're flying blind for this approach until we're through all the cloud and fog and Christ knows what else ok it's time for another flap See here, laps from three. I'll we'll keep our plane nice and stable as we're slowing down. Now the engines are kicking up because we're now we're now at three thousand. We're below the glide slope, which is excellent, and we're going to be doing almost a hundred and eighty degree turn to the left. Right, time for more flat 
Flaps full. So we're about to do our turn. So let's get some other things. Now we're on final. Let's arm our spoilers. Flaps are full, that's fine. We will put our auto brake on medium because we're not on the And we can do a nice sort of steeper, sharper bank because we're, uh, we're on full flap and we're a lot slower. we go. So what we're going to look out for is this going in centre, which is our approach to the runway. And then once this starts coming down towards the centre, then we will know we'll, we'll be vertically right. So this is horizontal line up with the runway. And this is uh, our slope down to the runway. So look, we're, we're pretty much dead on there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take nav from the autopilot and put it into localizer mode. Localizer is this, so now the plane will try and keep this in the very center. Using, you know, and it's pretty much there, it's just going to be using a few to do that. I wonder if we can see the runway yet. Not a bloody thing. Okay, so this is going to get us to the exact um, centre of the runway here. And obviously, this once this is here, we will put full approach mode on, which will control our descent and keep this in the centre. So the closer we get to the runway, the lower down this will be until we end up landing on it. So we've now got uh, 10 nautical miles to the runway. Put gear down at about 8. This all looks good. Still want a few more things on here. This, this thing's are in climb mode. Oh, who knows? Okay, this has started coming down now as we get nearer. Once that's round about the middle, I will put it on full approach mode, and you'll notice our vertical speed will drop so it can keep that in the centre. Absolutely nothing out of the uh, window. It's a Cat 3 ILS, as you can see. Can land the plane for you. We'll go up close and I'll do the last bit manually. So we're nearly, we are nearly there for, to intercept it, and we'll click this button here. Right, that'll do now. So let's click approach, hold, if it will let me, which it isn't. Get a bit closer, approach. Now it will chase that diamond down. See, and we're eight nautical miles. Let's put gear down. And we will uh, tell the cabin crew. I can see something in the distance. I can't tell if it's smear on my monitor. Okay. Oh, lights just came on. I think that could be the runway there. So, uh, 26 left. So how far away? Six miles. Wouldn't this be fun on my tutorial? We uh, we were nowhere near the runway and we just smacked into the ground. Ah, oh, look, here we go. All the landing st stuff has come onto here. You know? 
as you can see on here. So we've got everything, signs on, cabin ready, spoilers armed, flaps full. And well, we're just waiting till we can see what it is. So yeah, I see a little bit going on over there. We're now five miles away and worryingly we can't see the runway. grab me a controller because I'll be turning the autopilot off probably when we're about 500 feet off the ground might be even less uh, some things are coming into focus now fog I think here is our runway That's better. You can see it now. As you can see, that diamond there and that diamond there are dead centre. Perfect. It says we're a thousand feet. I think we have an elevation of feet for the runway. So, although we're 1300 feet above sea level, we're a thousand feet ground. Yeah, we're on the little dinky runway there. I don't know what that says on there. Let's have a look. Landing LDG inhibit. Okay, I don't know what that means. Not seen that before. Must be something new in this new version. So what we tend to do when we come in... I will, uh, once we get to about 50 feet, I, I'll reduce the throttle to zero and lift the nose up very slightly. Well, let's turn the uh, autopilot off. Okay, 200. 100. Right, throttle off, flare that up very slightly, and let go. Okay, oh I didn't even engage reverse thrusters, should have done. <laughs> then you turn those off at 60 knots. Okay. I think we can now turn off the runway. Sorry if I veered off to the left a bit. That's because I was quickly trying to do my reverse thrust. Forgotten about. So yeah, once you're down, put your thrusters into reverse until 60 knots. Okay, so we can now reset the flaps. We can go up here and turn the APU on. I don't know where I'm going to park this thing. Probably it's something you'd work out, but we're going to go around here. Oh, I've got to go across the runway. Okay, we'll stop here. We do we do a look left and right. Obviously, I'm not going to bother. But what I'm going to do is put my runway turn lights on. 
And I'll turn the... Uh, I'll, I'll keep the landing lights. No, I'll turn them off. I'll put the strobes to auto. That means they should still be on. Right, let's go across. Find somewhere to park over here. I'm doing this very badly, by the way. I haven't put any sort of uh, effort into finding the taxiway to go. <laughs> I'm literally just ploughing straight through everything. And we'll try and line ourselves up with one. Normally ATC would tell you what taxiway to use and where to go. And sometimes you even get a follow me van lit up. Like an AA van showing you where to go. Okay, we'll uh, plonk it in one of these I reckon. Find a spare one. There's one up here. I think. There's a lorry and a sodding. That's over here. And there's a coach in the way. Wow. We'll just go straight through the coach. It's probably key to so let's just run through it. This is the yellow line to follow. Oh god Christ, there couldn't be more in the way. Is it gonna move? No, right. Bye, kids. Okay, and I want to stop around here. Okay. Let's put the parking brake on and see if we're in place. We go up to eight. We've got ground power available. I don't know why that, that should have been off. But yeah, maybe I should have turned that off earlier. But it is available, so we are in the right place. Right, so what we can do now, we can turn the seatbelt and signs off, and we can now go down here and turn off the engines. We're running on APU power now. Oh, God, we've actually got a logbook. Well, it didn't, didn't, didn't register the takeoff, but it registered the, uh, registered the landing. Um, right, where was I? Right, engine's off. Unlock the cockpit. What I want to do is, um, APU's running at the moment. We can turn off our anti-ice. Uh, we can turn on our external power. We can tune shoulder goal ground services. And we can get the uh, jetway. The call ground easy jet echo Zulu four five six seven. Could you please connect the jetway to the aircraft? Right. Here comes the jetway. Now this never works. Getting the baggage unloaded, it says it can't find it. We're going back to the 80s where all the baggage used to get lost. All the Christ knows what they're doing with that. Right, APU off. Now we've got external power. Um, what I should have done was come here and set the nose, dazzle everybody. Um, engines 
are off, so beacon lights can come off, landing lights are completely off, and nav and logo come off, because they're not going to do a quick turnaround. No smoke, off. Oh, and seat belts are already off, of course. Seat belts are off. Um, we can put that to dim. So, bait, and then it's just basic cleanup where you'd go around, turn all the dials off, and everything else like that. Um, just do the reverse of what we did in the startup. So, you do these, you turn the ideas off. I'll leave these where they are. No, actually, the etiquette, turn them down. Well, normally, I don't think they'd always start cold. That's off. Overhead brightness off. So we've more or less cleaned up here. Then we go to. To call ground easy jet Echo Zulu four five six seven. Could you please send a fuel truck? Oh, I, I, I didn't ask for a fuel tr truck. <laughs> I must have clicked the wrong key there. Turn this lock down. Turn these down. There's traffic collision, collision avoidance system trans traffic. What was I saying earlier for the TCAS? Don't need that at all. That should have come off when I pressed the uh, brakes. There we go. That's that. Okay, down to the main panel here. I'll turn off this. This. TCAS off. Up to standby. This one off. That's off. Then we can just turn the lights down. And our pedestal light. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, our parking brakes are on, aren't they? Yep. Oh, our ground spoilers. Don't need those armed. I believe that's pretty much it. So we've got our torch on here. So last thing I need to do is turn the external power off and then the batteries. So the only light I've got is my torch light. And we're here. End of tutorial. Oh, my summary of this. Okay, I made a couple of mistakes. Forgive me for that. Again, I'm pilot. I've learned all this from videos and for some of it's probably wrong still but you know it seems to work and I hope the landing was was okay so here we are um, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next video